Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato on today's Everything Music. It's What Makes This Song Great, episode 105. The artist is Seal and the song is Kiss from a Rose, coming up next. Kiss from a Rose is off Seal's second record, which is called Seal 2. It was released on May 23rd, 1994. Produced by Trevor Horn, the song was written by Seal and is one of the best sounding songs that you've heard on this entire series. It's an incredibly well-written song, beautiful melody. The orchestration is incredible on it. The arrangement is amazing on it. And it's a great example of modal interchange. And some of you are like, what does that mean? I always like to talk about the theory of these songs because these are the things that make them great. Typically, a song, the song starts on G, and then it goes to E flat major, F major. So here's your G major chord. Then you got E flat major, F major, and then back to G major. Now, normally in the key of G minor, the tonic chord would be G minor. That would be this. And then you go down to the flat six, to the flat seven, to one. The interchanges this where the one chord is actually major okay so it changes key it actually exchanges the tonic chord from major from minor to major that's where the interchange is okay so you're hearing this that no b flat dun. and that particular note is what gives the song so much color and beauty and it's also in 3-4. Let's check out the beginning of the song. Okay, it's a beautiful a cappella vocal part that starts really on E flat major with this. He goes up to the note B flat and then down to A. That's the main melody line, A on the F chord, and then, and then he goes. That's the modal interchange that happens there. He's bringing in that, he's going from the B flat to the B right off the bat and introducing that, but the vocals are outlining those chords. Beautiful. All those interweaving lines, and then, Oboe enters. The oboe enters. Along with the oboe, the piano enters. Check out the voicings. There's a starkness to these actual voicings. He starts out with a first uh, first inversion B flat major chord to a second inversion F major chord and then to just the open fifth just G D right no third in it to give it a starkness and then the next time once again open fifths B flat C, uh, F B flat and then down to a, an F major spread triad and then it goes to a G5 chord. There's only one of the chords that actually has the third in it, and it's the middle chord, the F major. It's in this octave, and happens in this octave. Other than that, they're using just roots and fifths, and that's what gives it that medieval sound. In addition to that, we actually have a harpsichord. When I hear those stark piano chords, those open fifths, and the harpsichord, and the oboe, and having it be in triple meter three, four time, I immediately think it sounds like the Renaissance. There used to be a grand time we alone on the sea. You became... So, already off the bat, we have all these really interesting intervals that are going on in the vocal melody. Okay, so you've got... He starts out right with a sus for it. Yeah, doo, doo. Goes to the major seventh of the E flat, 
Then he goes, duh, duh. really interesting jump there down to the ninth. He's implying like B flat over E flat, so E flat major nine. Duh, 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 duh. And then sharp four in the F. Duh, duh. Then he jumps up. Duh, 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 duh. Check it out. There used to be a great tower alone on the sea. And then you became G major seven. On the dark side of me. So that do 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 is is a G major seven chord. There, really sophisticated, right? Because we just heard this, and then the ear is hearing this. This is pop music. This song was Song of the Year, won the Grammy for Song of the Year, Record of the Year, and Best Vocalist or Male Vocalist. Seal won in the Grammys that year. Okay, this is what pop music used to be. Incredible songwriting, orchestration. The song was written by one person, Seal, and has all the best playing on it. I mean, this is really amazing sounding. So here we go, the major seven. You became the light on the dark side of me. Love remains. Okay, and then there. Da, 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 da. That's like a G add four, is what we call it. It's a G major triad, but with a fourth in it. So, da, 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 da. Beautiful. We just heard this sound on G major, and now we're hearing this. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. Love remains a drug that's the high of the There's all these hooks that are going on there. The bass is going... Right? Because it's going F major to C major, then back to G major. But if you listen to the piano, if you solo the piano... Beautiful. Just those moving six, right? Beautiful, right? That's all kind of hidden in the background. Listen. The, drum, the, the melody right there that goes with that moving bass is he goes up F, do, 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 then to the third of the C, to the major seven, and then, and then. The drum, That part is amazing. That's one of my favorite parts. He's going from G major 7, then right to G minor 7. Okay, so he's swapping out that uh, F sharp for F and the B for B flat. Right next to each other. Who would think of something that unusual? I'm going to call Seal and ask him. Hey, Rick. How are you, Seal? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Good. Okay, so I have some questions I want to ask you. I'm doing this I'm doing this breakdown of Kiss from a Rose and the melody is so complex. Like some of the phrases when you go and then you go those odd interval jumps. Well, how do you think of things like that? The, the best explanation I I I can come up with is that I didn't know that you couldn't really do those things or those things were really unusual. Um, it just felt like the, it just felt like the, you know, like the right thing to do. Um, I, 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 when I wrote that song, interestingly enough, I couldn't play an instrument. You know, some, some may argue I still can't. <laughs> still can't. <laughs> but in any case, I couldn't play an instrument. And, and somebody, a dear friend of mine, had just bought me this recording multitrack. It was called a, a Tascam 244. I kind of started this song as an experiment to, to try and figure out how to work this machine. So I was thinking less song and more, oh, let me try and practice you know, uh, how, uh, let me try and figure out how this thing works. More, more, let's, let me kind of see how this whole bouncing thing works. 
know, you know, you know, I've been, I've been, I was reading the manual, I was reading the instructions, you know, uh, trying to figure out how the bouncing thing works. And I thought, okay, so what I'll do is I will try and emulate what an orchestra would do. You know, so hence you have the da 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 ba 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 da 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 and 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 so um the whole thing happened really quickly. It was like it was really a kind of an afternoon's work of about two or three hours, and really, the, I wasn't really thinking about the melody at, at all. But did you know that when it snows, my eyes e flat F, the light e flat that you shine can be seen. That drum fill has three flams in it. Let's listen to it. I'm going to solo it. Love this. Huge Tom sound. It's perfect fill for that. Let's listen before that. Eyes become alive, the light that you shine right can be seen. Do, do, blah, boom, blah, do, do. Oh, and then the strings on this build. Listen to this string writing. This crescendo here. And does that. Do, do, do line right into the chorus. Now listen to that in context when you hear that string. Out. Check it out. You hear that string line. Eyes become alive, the light that you shine can well. be seen. Baby. There's so many things that are going on there. You have the piano build too. Listen. All right, so here's with the strings and the piano. I love this. It's perfect. Okay, now, let's talk about the chorus. Okay, Seal singing there is amazing on that baby. So, he's going from that B flat, the flat third, baby, implying that, that uh, it's a blues sound to it, right? And then he goes right into the line, just incredible. So, let me solve the vocal. Baby, I can pay you to a kiss from a rose on the grave. Ooh, the more. Oh my God! I mean, that is just ridiculous singing. When he holds that note out. Just, baby, and it, and it just has such intensity. Okay. Okay, there's a couple things that happen there. So you got these lyrics. Baby, I compare you to a kiss from a rose on the gray. I don't know what that means, but it sounds amazing. People would always say, is it a kiss from a rose on the gray? or a kiss from a rose on the grave, or a kiss by a rose on the grave. And I would say, what do you think I'm saying? <laughs> and, or they, would, or they, they would say, what, is it, what did you mean when you were saying that? And I would say, what do you think I meant? And they would say, I think you're saying, I, I think you're saying a kiss from a rose or on the grave because, you know, there was this lonely tower and you're the lonely gray in tower in this kind of desolate wasteland. And, you know, and this this woman or this angel, she's come and she's kissed you and she's lifted you up. And I would go, that's what it means. Okay, I want to get back to what I call the money chord of the chorus. Listen. Right here is the money chord. Right here. Oh, that change the second time when it holds on the F. So, the bass is moving along, then right here. It's the first time we have E flat, F, G. Then the, oh, 
sweet. And then. Now listen to it in context. When that chord hits, it's just amazing with the vocals. Incredible drum fills that are going on there, but the vocals, I mean, that's really the, the amazing thing about this. Let me solo what's going on in the lead and the harmonies here in the chorus. Here's the Baby, chorus. Baby, I can pay you to a kiss from a rose on the gray. Ooh, the more I get of you, the stranger it feels, yeah. Oh. He goes, yeah, right, he's emphasizing that. That's sus for, yeah. All those tension notes that are happening there, it makes you want to listen to it over and over. I've never, ever gotten sick of this song. Every time it hits that part of the chorus, I'm like, yes. It's amazing, right? Yeah, then the post chorus build E flat, F, G. Then interlude. I put that thing where it says medieval interlude because this is really sounds like medieval music or renaissance music. That's where that, that's that whole vibe, especially when that guitar comes in doubling the melody. The bass playing in unison. Oh, nice. Then the vocals come in with the harmonies. Then verse two. No crash. And then he has this answer vocal. Da, da. So it's a double suspension. Da, da. Listen. And you hear that? You hear that voice sustain over. Listen. You remain my power. That F sharp. Do you? Beautiful, isn't it? You remain my power, my pleasure, my pain, baby. Oh, this break is even better this time. There's a little percussion thing that happens in it. Listen. Baby, baby, almost, it's almost like a heartbeat that's going on there. Let me find it here. It's um It's like a little loop that's going on there, but it sounds like a heartbeat. And then when the piano comes back in, listen, this chord it comes in with. You don't even notice that, listen. One of the reasons you don't notice that because it works perfectly with the strings, listen. that big swell on the G minor chord. That's what's going on in the second pre-chorus. So let's hear it in context. That's amazing. Listen. When it snows, he goes to... G minor, listen to the strings, how they swell on this G minor. Oh. I think you shot at this. Then. Baby, they had that drum fill happening there. The baby is so emotional. The string line is building, everything is building. The piano part, it's perfectly orchestrated. And here's the chord. Oh, so good in context. The vocals, though, baby, and then he swells into that. So good. And 
And then here we go. And then. You can hear that horn line there. Listen. Listen. Then the voice, yeah, yeah. Right, that double suspension, four, three, six, five. In the second verse, as in the first verse, there's actually two guitar parts. There's an electric guitar part and an acoustic. There's actually two acoustic parts. One sounds like it's in kind of a dad get tuning. One sounds like it's in standard tuning. And then there's a clean electric and they're hard pan, these multiple guitars. Let's check it out. Once again, these performances build up at the very end, right? They actually have a performance to them. They're not adding parts, they're just playing it louder and crescendoing, so they go right along with the strings, right along with the piano there. And that makes these builds, that, that's, there's not a lot of compression on this mix. Everything is just played through by pros. And when you have pros playing, they play with dynamics. So you don't even have to ride the faders. It's like the song sounds mixed when I just turn the tracks on all level, which is really what it should sound like. Let's listen to them in context. Now let's listen to the strings on this build. They play a different figure with the piano. You notice the strings too on the downbeat of the chorus. They're they crescendo. Listen. Right. It's so triumphant sounding, once again with the vocals. Listen. It's amazing with how dense the mix is that these things are just so clear. You can hear them so easily. This is perfect production. This is the stuff that really doesn't exist these days, honestly, in pop music. We don't find the sophistication like this with real orchestration and professional players, uh, incredibly sophisticated songwriting, just beautiful orchestration that everything has its place. Everything has beautiful stereo imaging, has huge low end, the drums sound fat, and it's not all squished doesn't have any of those elements, yet it sounds so fresh because it's completely natural sounding. Because all the playing have those performance elements. Every individual player are crescendoing together and playing in concert to make the song exciting. <laughs> That's a little transition to the bridge. And then. This is another thing you would never find in a current song, an actual second interlude before the bridge. So that goes on, and then we hit the bridge, which is here. Let's 
Let me solo the vocals first so you can hear them just isolated in the bridge. They're beautiful. I've been kissed by a rose on the grave. I've been kissed by a rose. And if I should kiss by a rose on the grave, I've been kissed by a rose on the grave. Next, let me play you what the strings are doing because the arrangement is really great here. back to the verse again. Back in the 90s and the 80s, people would go back and have a third verse. That was actually common to do after a bridge. Nowadays, it's like, you, if you have a bridge, you get right back to the chorus and you finish the song and it's over in three minutes, right? The rose on the bridge, there is so much in the contemporary, so I'll just have Extra layers. Listen to what the bass does when it slides off right there in the break. This is this is my favorite break. Listen. And then the bass slides off, you hear the heartbeat, and then the piano comes in. Beautiful. This is the piano part, listen. I love that. Da da da. So it's like a so like B flat over E flat. Just it's beautiful. That voice, especially up in that register. And listen to the strings here. The strings are beautiful. Some of the vocals. All this echoing vocals, beautiful. The times. That's my favorite part in the song. The drums crash on one and then they do another crash on two. Listen to that in that chorus. This is amazing. Listen. And then, whoa! That drummer, it's like one, two, When Seal does those, ooh, it's just incredible. It's so in the pocket. I mean, it just it just grabs you, right? The phrasing on that. Listen, I'm a solo voice. Uh, perfect. Ooh, the more I get of you, the stranger it feels. Yeah. And now that your rose is in bloom, a light hits the gloom on the grave. Listen with everybody in. Coda. And then. 
But your rose is in bloom A light hits the gloom oh. On the grave I'm often asked the question, well, what is it about music I, I, I love? I, I go, you know, it's really two things that are most important to me in music. And if you really pushed me, it's one. But it's two things. It's the song and the voice. It's the song and the voice. And if you really pushed me, I'd say it's the song. Because it's the song that changed my life. It's the song that made me realize that I could express myself in a way that I never that I never imagined possible it was a it was, it's the song that that made me realize that I could communicate to millions of people it's the song that made me want to be someone you know it's it's the song to me you know uh, as as bono said ideas come and go but songs last forever and 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 I love the songs. And as far as I'm concerned, it's what you're doing that is upholding the tradition of the song. And I wish there were more people like you. Unfortunately, there aren't as many as I would like there to be. But I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing to the for the industry. I love that you're 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 you're, you're giving young people hope and educating them and reminding them that it is the song. Uh, 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 and the integrity of the song and the voice that at all costs has to be upheld. So thank you. Thank you, Seal. Appreciate it. I'd like to thank my friend Seal for appearing in the video. He is the one actually that got me the stems to the song. And I'd like to remind you to subscribe. For those of you that watch the channel and haven't hit the bell icon, please do that. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about music theory, check out my Beato book on my website at www.rickbeato.com or you can check out my ear training course at beatoeartraining.com. Thanks so much for watching. I love you.